Normally I'm not the guy to cover big AI model releases, but this one was so good and so interesting to me specifically that I just, I really have to talk about this one. The model I'm talking about here is Claude 4.0. And the reason why I care so much about this one is because it's actually good about the niche technologies I care about. I am a huge Svelte kit guy and I really enjoy writing effect code. I like working with some of the more bleeding edge pieces of tech. And this is the first model that actually does a pretty good job of working with these things out of the box. So I wanted to make this video to go over the benchmarks the Svelte community has been doing on Claude 4.0, some of the ways I've been using it, and also why I think this model is so good at all of these things and what this sort of means for the future of technologies like Svelte and Effect and that kind of thing. The post that got me looking at this closer was actually from Stanislav. I apologize if I pronounced that incorrectly, but he is a really great member of the Svelte community, makes some really good videos, and has been maintaining this Svelte bench thing for LLMs. He's been doing tons of stuff with all the different models, been benchmarking these things for a while, but the ones I wanted to focus on today were the Claude models. These are the bench results for all of the different Claude models. In 3.5 Haiku, it was able to do some basic stuff with counter and derived in each and effect and all that stuff, but it would fail on inspect and props. Claude 3.7 was surprisingly actually worse, although from what I heard in all of the testing I did, Claude 3.7 was actually a generally worse model for a lot of things. I found myself typically wanting to reach for 3.5 instead of 3.7, but luckily that is changed with Claude 4 Opus and just Claude 4 in general. Both Claude 4 Opus and Claude 4 Sonnet did fail on the inspect rune, but generally speaking, they actually got it right, which is huge. Most models cannot write Svelte code at all. If you scroll down here a little more and you look at what, like what Google's been doing, Gemini is having a ton of trouble. Gemini 2.5 Pro is doing better, still fails on snippets. Um, then when we get down to the OpenAI models, 4.0 really has trouble. 4.0 completely shits the bed. 4.1 Mini cannot do anything. You can see the problem where when you're writing code in a more niche framework like Asphalt, you're going to have a lot of trouble getting most AI models to give you any competent code. Theo's been talking about this a ton lately, where a huge benefit of React these days is that normal React code with your use state and use effects, there is an infinite amount of React code out on the internet. And obviously these things are trained on the internet, so React code is just inside the model and they can kind of just do it versus Svelte is more niche. There's not nearly as much Svelte code. And when we get into something like Svelte 5, which is not even a year old, there's really not a ton of Svelte 5 code out there that's open source and good. So the fact that they were able to get Claude 4 to be this good at it is huge. And I'm really excited to see this. And I think a lot of the reason why it's so good is if we go to Anthropic's site and you look at their model comparison table, if we look at uh, Opus, if we look at 4 Opus, 4 Sonnet, uh, Sonnet 3.7, and you go down here to the bottom, you'll see that the training cutoff date was November 2024 for 3.7, but March 2025 for 4 for Claude 4, which is huge. This means that it's going to actually have Svelte 5 code in there, which is why it can actually do some stuff with it. I've also been doing a bunch of testing with Effect, another library I've been really enjoying lately, and it actually can write decent Effect code. This is something I've been running into as well, where Effect is one of those libraries that has decent-ish documentation, but models really struggle with, because again, there's not that much Effect code out there, and certainly not nearly as much as like Python code or React code. But Claude 4 is actually a lot better at it. I was just asking it some stuff about effect.sync because I wanted to get deeper into that. It gave me some really good information here that's actually correct and useful. I went deeper on it and just kind of chatted back and forth with it for a while. And it was actually able to give me useful stuff on stuff like uh, the sync function, the map function, the flat map function, pipes, all these different things. I was able to get useful information out of it, which was huge. This is something that I was really, really happy to see because I was really worried that there was going to be a future here where these models were just not going to get better at newer technologies. And it was just going to result in the thing Theo has been talking about of a React dominant world or just the technologies that have been cementing themselves to the point where we can't have new stuff. And I don't want that. I want to be able to have a better way to write my TypeScript code. I want to be able to use something like Effect for my backends where I can actually handle my errors properly. I want to be able to use something like Svelte where I don't have to deal with all of React's weird quirks. I don't want to deal with Next.js. I love the stuff that the Svelte team is doing. I'm working on a video right now, which will be out soon, talking about all the really cool stuff they're doing with async Svelte and the coming RPC handlers. There's a very bright future to these technologies and I don't want us to be limited by what has been in the last 10 years. This is really showing that in the future, we probably will be able to get these things as OpenAI and Google 
put out models that have more recent training cutoffs, it looks like we should actually be able to get some useful stuff out of them for newer technologies. I don't know if the problem is fully solved. If we look back at the bench, it is still failing on inspect, and I've been using this a ton in cursor for some stuff I've been working on. It is failing in some places, specifically like the uh, new on keyword thing, where Svelte 5 switched it from being instead of on colon click, it is now just on click one word. And these models still qu haven't quite figured that out yet. It's, it's a very subtle little thing. And generally speaking, it doesn't really matter because you just get the little squiggles and you go down and fix it manually. But it's one of those things where they're not quite perfect, but it is getting there. And there is one other model that I did want to talk about here that's kind of a sleeper thing here is the Vercel V0 model. This was a really weird one where Vercel of all companies released an AI model. It didn't get a lot of fanfare or hype. Um, it's not a huge model release by any stretch of the imagination. I don't even think it's a new model. I don't think they trained it from scratch. I believe it's a fine tune on something else. But they probably just ended up using the data they have from doing V0 and getting the thumbs up and thumbs down on people saying this is a good generation or this is a bad generation. This model is actually really, really good for Svelte. I went through and ran the inspect rune component task, which is the one that Claude 4 failed on to test out the inspect rune. And while I don't think it quite got it perfectly, it very nearly got there. Um, this is what it ended up outputting from the V0 model, and it's pretty much correct. It actually did things that I didn't know uh, inspect could do. It went through, set up the text correctly with the state, set up the char count correctly with the derived, the inspect, obviously, we all know how to do this. It was able to get other stuff that even I didn't know about with like inspect.with, where we can use the with function to basically hijack the inspect and put out a custom message. It did kind of get this wrong where it's not actually value in previous. The value is just saying whether it's an init or an update and previous is actually just what it's been changed to. So it was a little bit wrong here. But then within the effect here, it did do the trace correctly. And I think what's really cool about this model is that it is a fine tune. And this is something I've been thinking about a lot lately, where maybe this is a direction some of these newer technologies can go to be relevant in the future. Fine tuning is something that I really, really want to get into. Um, basically taking some model like a llama or something like that, giving it shit loads of examples for Svelte or Effect or whatever, and making a model that is really good at something specific. That's what this V0 model is. It's really good at writing uh, TypeScript front-end code. I'm sure that this is really good at Next.js, really good at React, um, and it seems to be really good at Svelte. I could definitely see a future where these newer technologies are able to fine tune smaller models to be really good at them. And we almost end up having different models for different technologies that are very small, very lightweight, very good at only one specific thing, because that's the thing with these foundational models like a Claude or a ChatGPT or a Gemini. They're trained on everything. They're meant to be good at doing everything. This model is meant to be good at one thing. And that's a really, really cool idea. I. Again, I don't know a huge amount about all of this. I have a lot more to test on it. But what all of this has really shown me is that there is a future where technologies like Effect and Svelte can have a future. They're not going to be dead, and I'm uh, I'm very excited about this. I pretty much completely switched my cursor uh, agent thing, whatever they're calling this, over from using the auto model to Claude for Sonnet because it can now actually understand and work with the technologies I'm working with. Uh, recently, I've been testing out Convex more, and I wanted to switch over this um, chat state thing I wrote. It's a Svelte 5 class thing. I made a dedicated video about why these are so cool recently. You can go check that out. It'll be linked somewhere. And I was literally able to just tell it like, hey, take all of the API calls I have in here that are going to my current API and switch them over to being uh, Convex backend calls and switch all the state variables over and make sure everything works. And it just one-shotted it. It was able to correctly set up the Convex client. It was able to correctly go in here and change the add message function correctly to instead of using the effect backend calls I was using to now use convex it just did it was able to just do all of this right off the rip and I wasn't able to get other models to do this so yeah if you're working with newer technologies or less adopted technologies go try out Claude 4 it's a really really good model and I definitely think there's a future here where these AIs are able to help us with more than just the general things they're getting really good and I'm really really happy about it if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. And until next time, write more salt code.